Well, thank you and welcome back. Next on stage is Birgit Olsen. Her talk is about how mental health can affect your creativity. I've known Birgit for quite some time. I, at one point she was even my colleague. She's a mom of five, grandmother of one. It's your first time in Utrecht. Yes. You didn't do any sightseeing? You're not going to either? No. Not planned. Uh, she collects word camp mugs and uh, her family rolls her eyes at her every time she comes back and has a new one. The favorite one is one from 2015. Is it really still yeah. there? The one from Berlin, yeah. right? Okay. I have two ones. <laughs> Don't break them. So give a warm welcome applause to Birgit. still awake. Yeah, we had some great talks before this morning. Uh, Chris Blackman held the keynote. I know you are mostly, I can imagine, frustrated about the current state of WordPress maybe. I can tell you don't don't bring yourself into deep frustration. <laughs> Try to be creative with this kind of um, adventure and yeah as uh, Karen introduced me um, I am a mom of five children if this is not enough I tried to contribute to WordPress over several years I, I call myself or I get known as a WordPress and WordCamp veteran so I'm not the grumpy old woman like Ryan told by herself, but yeah, I, I'm the uh, chubby girl of the WordPress community. And today I would like to uh, um, share a little bit about my own experience with mental health and what affects has mental health. Uh, I was um, trained um, as a life coach. Um, of my own experience and I have a big interest in art, also in psychology and my first question to you is Karen I have it with me I would like to ask you what if someone knows what this kind of freaky stuff is does someone knows it except Karen you know it <laughs> No? Okay. This fancy stuff is um, helping people with um, disabilities to put on socks on your feet. You roll up the sock on the top and switch your food into it to get your socks on your feet. Because people like me, we can't reach our feet because of some physical disabilities. But what does it happen uh, to be with creativity, WordPress? I call a bit back later to that. Um, why we are here is uh, we are talking about creativity, but what is creativity for you? Um, creativity um, is an expression of yourself. And it is really important that you be aware of yourself and know and, and treat yourself as an individual. You are individual and you are maybe struggling with your, your expression as yourself. Um, to tell a little bit about me, about this topic, um, I was grown on the countryside, on a farm, and I wasn't really accepted in my school with my 
classmates because I was different. I am always a person who is different. I don't fit in any structure or something like that because, yeah. But that's um, really hard when you are in the age of nine and people are ignoring you because you are different and you have greater ideas and yeah that was the first time when I struggled with kind of mental issues because I was really early in my young depressed about okay who am I who am I why are they are treating me like I am I they are uh, begging me and, and uh, mobbing it's a better word I guess um, so yeah there are different ways uh, into my youth and trying to find myself but it didn't work really well and then I got married and then, then I got pregnant or otherwise I got pregnant and then I married because that's how it had to be married and my husband uh, was mostly on the road as a truck driver so I was mostly alone with my kids and you may ask you, okay, he is never at home or at least some days in a week. Why the heck did they get five children together? So my husband told her uh, yeah, mostly, I was at home at the D-Day. Okay, yeah, we managed to get five kids, but in some case I, I learned about, um, I want to express myself more and, and bring my creativity into the world but as a stay at home mom or I worked at least a lot with my mom's uh, restaurant and I had my hobby building websites I don't know who for you, of you know the software Net Objects Fusion are there some people in this room? <laughs> um, okay, uh, I'm really an old person <laughs> I guess um, yeah, there, I had my, my first experience um, building websites, um, okay, like um, scratching them. And so I learned a little bit about um, how it works in the world. And this is what I did in the evenings when my kids are, were in bed. And um, someday I found about WordPress. Uh, I, I, I deal a little bit with um, some kind of scripts like B2 Coffee Log and then I saw, oh, WordPress, interesting. But in the first version, it wasn't really so interesting to building website with it. It was blogging, okay, blogging, I don't want to blog, I want to build websites and I want to build websites with my clients. And in 2005, I got uh, self-employed and um, yeah, and I got some jobs at attended to work camps and I got WordPress related jobs and I got onboarded into the WordPress community. Uh, I worked for an agency in Germany who maintained the translations for the German WordPress community. And my first task as an employee was to maintain this translation in the formal version and then the informal version. Maybe you're talking about two kind twice translating WordPress and um, so I managed to translate WordPress uh, I guess WordPress 3.5 was uh, about 4,000 4, strings to translate I have to do by myself it wasn't really funny it took a while but yeah I managed it yeah and, and so I was always asking myself how where am I who am I in this work in this community because I'm not a developer, I'm not so deep in, in code like Chris or you in the audience, neither I'm a designer. So I didn't fit any place into companies, classic jobs. So that I was, I, I need to find myself. What are my talents? Who am I? And which kind can I fit into? And through my education as a life coach, I learned about the big five. Um, the big five is called the personality traits. 
you can call it also the ocean. That's why I choose the theme of my slides. Um, the first is in the ocean, the openness. The openness is your experience and you, um, that describes your uh, deepness and complexity um, of your mental health, of your, your, um, your mind, how you are thinking and how open you are to new kind of explorations and, and um, um, adventures. And then um, the conscientiousness uh, is a word I can't express really good. Uh, it is a trait that can you describe as a tendency to control your impulses and uh, also to act social and social accepted. Because as you know, on a work camp, you as an attendee assigned that you are aware about the code of conduct and are you are nice to your people around you and this is this trait which moves forward for that and also your behaviors and how to facilitate your own um, good direction everything what is accepted in the um, in the world then is there the part of extroversion is um, how are you going outside or inside? You know who from you is more uh, introvert? Yeah. You have also an extroversion. So, extroversion. Uh, but you have other ways to, to show it. So, and everyone is going how to deal with your own energy level. So, that is important that you know yourself. Where are your energy levels? And what sucks the energy and what brings you the energy. So if you find this for you, then you have your extroversion. And the next part is the agreeableness. Um, how you are going to agree with concerns around you and um, how you orientate yourself into the community you are. And also, the neuroticism. Um, neurotic, I, I don't know who saw um, the film with... Um, uh, uh, um, forget it. Um, <laughs> there are so many great films to show how people are neurotic. But it's also being confident with yourself and loving yourself and your own body. Uh, especially for me, I'm a, a person who is not in the ideal model measurement, but I have to feel confident with me and accept myself and that why I'm here. And that's why it's important to learn your five, big five. It helps you to learn about yourself, about your unique personality. Everyone in this room has a unique personality. And that is um, the first step to leverage also your strengths and find about your weakness and take a balance into your daily business and daily work. Yeah, that even if you found out about your own big five, I found about myself. And I found out that I don't fit any in big companies, setting daily um, travel, uh, community, um, going daily on office and fixed structures. I need my my creative space. I have to. I, I need to go to a cafe and writing there and sitting on my balcony. And so that's the place where I'll sometimes maybe lost my jobs because I didn't fit really well in some concepts of companies. So I decided to go self-employed, full-time. But if you have five kids and three youngers are living with me at home, um, you have a responsibility to fill your fridge. It's not always easy, <laughs> but yeah. Um, 
I learned about that life sucks sometimes. Especially when you are a creative person who don't fit in the normal stuff. Uh, the chances to get depressed or get some mental disorders is really good. I can recommend it, not. Um, but at one point in my life I decided to quit my marriage and leave my husband with my kids because the situation wasn't really good because he was a whole week away in his truck and I was going and moving forward, learning new skills and but the communication wasn't really good and so I decided to uh, get into a new adventure so and I had to fight about my kids rights and my husband wasn't really uh, amused about the fact that I wanted to leave him so the couple years after the decision wasn't re was really worse for me I had to fight for my kids I had a budget about five six hundred euros per month to pay my bills to fill the fridge I had no car and then I got ill also what it makes not really easy to work and get some income yeah but as you see good news I managed uh, to come out of the situation so um, it, it worked sometimes yeah but it is really important to show also vulnerability and ask for help because when you are able to ask for help, it is not a sign of, uh, of sucking and not dealing with something. It is a show of your strength. Because when you are aware you need help, you can't figure out it by yourself. It's the best part what you can do. Ask for help. Because your individuality makes a difference. Um, I think every one of you know some artists like Van Gogh, Albert Einstein as a great mind, and also Robin Williams, the actor. But every one of them had also mental disorders of depression, schizophrenia, etc. And yeah, but they did great work. And the researchers show that there is a link or maybe a link between creativity and creative process and mental disorders. So it maybe can be that the link is there it can help, creativity can help or make vulnerable to mental disorders. Like I described by myself, when you don't fit in any complex systems and feel also pressure on, and can't express yourself and your creativity, it can make you really frustrated and depressed. But also, mental disorders may help one person to be creative. Let's take the example with Vincent Fagot. Um, he painted his image with a sunflowers, I guess you can uh, remember. After a big phase of uh, mental disorders. And when he cut off his ear because of his um, um, process around but he created a great artwork which lasts over several decades and uh, you are sitting here and you know the person. But this expression was about mental disorders. So it's not my recommendation to cut off your ear to get known as a creative person. But maybe it is uh, in, uh, in helping that you find your own way to be creative. You can be creative when you are writing code. 
you can be creating writing articles, you can be creative uh, designing, it's a visual part of the creativity, but also you can be creative in your workflow on a daily basis. When you, you're fitting, figuring out that your workflow is not fitting to your personality, then change it. So when you don't have the chance to change your environment, then maybe you can change your own view on this workflow. Um, um, yeah, there are some links, uh, there are many research around that, but for me it is important to, to express that there's um, a big chance to, to explore the personality of yourself or myself uh, to bring it on the on the street. I call it like to say to bring the tires on the on the street and move forward. Um, what I learned about my situation um, was yeah, life sucks, but if you take small steps on every day. <coughs> I had some uh, mental dis issues, not only mental issues, but I uh, have physical issues because I have um, both hips are not in the best shape. I had an, um, um, they're not fitting right in the position, and so this I have hip atrocis since the age of 15. So um, that makes it difficult for me to walk long distances or stand long time. This is what something that makes frustrating because you can't work, you, you want to explore the world, you want to make um, a visiting and uh, going through Utrecht to see stuff. I can't do. So it's sometimes frustrating, but I accepted my situation. But some years ago, it's not so long, I guess two years, I had a situation that I got an infection which uh, sucks all energy of me. And I couldn't go out of bed, not of mental issues, but I was totally fatigued. Um, I had no energy to, to move from the bed and go to the bathroom, or um, cooking, or getting outside of the door. No way. And there had some situation where I decided, hmm, I thought about, okay, makes this life sense in this situation? But as I said, asking for help, I found help with a good um, natural practitioner uh, who figured out where the infection comes from. And we found our ways how to get out of it. But there was also my financial situation through getting job, losing job, getting job, losing job. Um, so it was really difficult to stay on track with different tasks I have to do. So I went forward to get more healthy. I went forward to get jobs, but I didn't have enough budget to visit bird camps, something I love doing since 2010. And um, yeah, then was bird camp uh, Europe in Paris. And I couldn't go there because my budget said, no, no way, you can't go. Because it's really expensive, it's not so far away from my hometown, but it's really expensive to stay, etc. And then I asked on Twitter, or I, I just shared my situation and said, okay, if there is a wonder happening that I can go to Paris and someone finds a room or something for me, I would like to go. And then it, the miracle happened and a good friend of mine of the German workers community had a spare room. He had a double overbooked room in a hotel. And he offered me his room for free. And he offered me also to bring me by car to Paris. We met each other on the middle of the street and then we went to Paris. And at this time, I 
or suffering from the infection. And I went through the WordCamp venue with two sticks and tried to get move forward. And people who know me a long time saw me trying to walk. <laughs> but this um, event uh, that uh, and the generosity I learned about that helped me a lot to get a motivated to move forward and get motivated to um, yeah enjoy my life again because I was on a point when I thought about to quit my life and through this great great offer I thought okay I can make it and so the, it happens that I learned more and I was more confident and say, okay, even if I'm not fitting in the role model or f some great models on the stage, but I'm a person, I have so many quality to bring with me and uh, know what I can do. And so that's, I'm thinking to, to share my experience with you. I have some takeaways. It's um, every time you ask for help, you will get help, but not even in this way you might be want the help. Sometimes the help comes from unknown ways, and don't let yourself be banned. Don't let it that you get bonded or in your in some structure you don't fit into and especially take small steps but keep working especially marcel is going to work camp europe and berlin next year and uh, he's taking small steps from his hometown through germany up to berlin and I hope that you find some accommodation in Germany as well. <laughs> but it is a good example. You're training, you're starting your training now, and you're moving forward so to to get your goal. And that's also in life. Set your goals and keep going, keep going, keep going, keep asking, keep going. And also, if you are happening with some issues or life events like my mom died, my best friend died, I got ill, um, I got divorced, um, my kids, I have five children, you know, you can imagine every child has some health issues sometimes, so I have five kids, five times issues and school issues, <laughs> something, but yeah, resilience can be learned. Uh, I got asked in, uh, before my talk how am I able to do this. I'm self-employed, I have five kids, and yeah, and I answered, just doing. And not overthink, keep it simple as possible. But what happened is, um, why I asked this, this is also a part um, of learning resilience. Um, I was thinking about to purchase this kind of stuff some years ago, but I thought hmm, <coughs> it's something for old people. And it is also a kind of resignation, not being able to put on my socks by myself without any help. But then I decided to purchase this and I put on my socks and my shoes in about four minutes, which took me mostly about 30 minutes to motivate myself to get my socks on my feet and people who don't have these issues can't understand it. But for me it was a freedom to put on my socks again and walk again and put on my shoes and 
try to get more fit and more healthy on every day. This is my small steps I have to practice currently. My family is in a great shape now. I have a loving partner over four years now and my kids are growing and I love to see my, my, my grandchild growing. He's now six months old and yeah, my wish to, to play with him and um, sit on the floor and, and play with him is not that easy. But I know I have to find creative ways how to enjoy the time with my grandchild, with my body disabilities, but also learning how to deal with the mental issue that disability brings with it. And that's where the created creativity comes again into topic. If you have any kind of disorders or mental issues or stress or something like that, use your creativity to find ways out. And use the creativity also to explore your goals. What are you wanting from yourself in your life? What is the next goal for you? What is the next step for you? And with this, you can move forward and create a great expression and your ocean in your life. Um, I would like to ask you a little bit about your experience. Does someone of you have some experience with creativity and mental health issues? And I started being creative when I had mental issues. Okay, you started when you have uh, you started um, with mental issues and to get creative or? Yeah, I started drawing when I uh, had some drawing. Okay. Yeah, that's an, a good example. You told you started your creativity uh, while you ask when you're asking yourself through the burnout. When I yeah, As, burnout is often um, a starting point of the reinvention of your life. But is it really necessary that we have to burn out before we change our life? I don't think so. Personal, I. Well, I was burned out, but because I had so many live events in a short time, I had no other chance to burn out. But yeah, maybe um, you find ways during your day, especially when you start moving outside. Get a good routine on your daily basis. Find the way you find, get um, joy in your life, happiness in your life even in small, small steps and um, yeah, that's what helped me a lot and exploring also the community and um, making friends, even if you're a remote worker, try to find places where you can socialize with people because the most people are of this in the room are sitting in the office or in a home office or in a co-working space and it can make feel alone and to avoid burning out through the feeling of loneliness you can find creative ways where you can socialize with your own big five exploration and being yourself And that's why I thought about um, creativity has long been associated with mental disorders. There are so many research, but my my experience is um, to find the own ways where you can explore and and, and uh, give your creativity outside, and find ways where you can find your resilience and. Even if the life is sucking, there are every time a way out of the situation. And that's what I want to say. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this very personal story. Are there any questions from the audience? I don't see any, but can I ask you, I know you were a very big advocate about women in repress and finding their space, their, the, the right place for them. How do they get over the fear of speaking in public? That's a good question. Um, especially when you're not really confident with the body or something like that. Um, my motivation is um, to inspire people. And um, so that's why I learned to, to stay more confident. And that, this is something you can learn. It starts on a small meetup group, maybe. And then you can start to, to go on a stage or something like that. And the more you practice, then you're more confident, you feel confident. When you have some disabilities, uh, like standing a long time, it can damage a little bit your confidence and bring you out of your track, of what we want to say, but yeah. I learned to find this fear of public speaking. Do you ever feel like you're an imposter, or is, does that fade in the back, into the background? Mm, no, um, I think I have also struggled with imposter syndrome sometimes. But it gets better. It's definitely on a daily basis. That's good to hear. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank and you. And good luck with everything. Uh, we're going to take a short break again here so we can set up for the next speaker. But give one more round of applause for the Birgit.